I actually fought against being a dealer for a long time. I started collecting when I was 15 and then I was a clothes designer, which I think is known. And then I became an interior designer and I always fought against being a dealer because I thought it wasn't creative enough, having come from the other background. And uh, eventually I decided that uh, one can be creative in whatever you do. And I went for it, as they say. I decided to specialise in British design of the late 19th and early 20th century because it was principally what I was collecting from my early days of, that, of collecting. Mm. And um, I did actually, early on, I did actually collect Art Nouveau and Art Deco as well. I actually had quite an extensive collection of Lilith glass before I was 21. And I had a birthday present, a 21st birthday present from my parents of six pieces of Lilith glass. But by the time I was in my mid-twenties, I'd really sort of honed down what I wanted to collect and nearly all of it was British. I think E.W. Godwin, you could say, is my favourite designer. And I think actually because he was much more eclectic than people realise. When, when people think of E.W. Godwin, people who know his work, they know his very famous sideboard, and rightly so. And his Anglo-Japanese furniture is what most people associate him with and that's what most lauded. But in the 1860s, he was doing very high Gothic revival items and buildings. Uh, I mean, very, very similar to his great friend, W. William Burgess. Mm -hmm. and, um, and yeah, and he, 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 was, he was very eclectic himself. So I think that's why I really appreciate him. I mean, he did, he did uh, furniture design, obviously. He did theatre design, he did costumes. He was a, a real, you know, polymath, if that's the word. I would much rather uh, find something and appreciate it by I than I would be being told that it's by an eminent designer or yeah. artist. I mean, I think that instinct is everything. I mean, quite often the two overlap. I mean, I've been quite fortunate in my career that I've bought things instinctively, which have then turned out to be major pieces, whatever that means. That's just a huge buzz, to be honest, to find something. And then to find out what it is and have one's instincts justified. No, that's a huge part of it. I'm not a name chaser at all, and I would say less and less. It, I actually increasingly, as I get older, find it frustrating that people buy by name and not by look. I mean, obviously, the named things are the things that fetch uh, extraordinary prices at auction and with art dealers and dealers. Um, and I, you know, and obviously those things are extraordinarily good, the best of them. But because something is by a particular artist or designer, in my view, doesn't make it good in itself. I think you have to look at the object or the painting first. And I also think a serious collector should buy things that they don't yet know what they are, but are very appealing. I mean, I, I've never done it for that reason, but I've had great success in my collecting career with that, just buying things instinctively. And I admire people who do that. My only rule to myself is that I only buy what I like. And that way, I mean, and there's no rhyme or reason to this business. Sometimes I can buy something and I'll sell it three hours later. Other times I'll buy something I really, really like and it'll take three years to sell. But that doesn't matter because I only buy what I like so it doesn't cause me visual distress. Uh, yes, it's, it's definitely changed. I mean, I think I, I think over a period of time, unless you're not learning, and I hope to learn something every day of my life, although it's a platitude, I really believe that, um, I, I look at things in a different way now. And I, having already said that the 19th century was very eclectic and taking things from different sources, I'm now really quite interested in the source material itself, as in Japanese art. I think to, to be an antique dealer or art dealer is rather ch a charmed life and I wouldn't have swapped it for anything. Why I'm having to say is because, um, I mean, uh, I'm, I should be uh, 70 next year, the year of the sale. I'm not really concerned with age. I think you're as young as you feel. Um, I have an awful lot of things, so I need to make some sense of that. Um, and I'm not saying this because you're asking me, but uh, I, I enjoy working with Lion and Turnbull and the textile auction I did two years ago was great fun. Um, it also imposes some kind of discipline, so it's nice that I actually have to focus and think that would be good in that situation or that's good in that situation. Mm -hmm. And um, I like a project. I've done a few projects in my dealing career and my, my design career before that and I, I like to work towards something and I'll have fun 
and I think it's uh, we'll be presenting things to people in a new way and things that people haven't seen and uh, I think it'll be um, a good exercise.